bless you. Welcome to the broadcast of the Justin Holy Temple Church, located at 1906 Joe Louis Boulevard in Shreveport, Louisiana, where we are under the leadership of Pastor Brandon Harper and First Lady Shiana Harper. We invite you to visit our website, www.jhtchurch.com. Feel free to sow a seed into this ministry by downloading the Givelify app and search for the Johnson Holy Temple. We also have cash up dollar sign Johnson Holy Temple. Once again, we walk you to the broadcast of the Johnson Holy Temple Church, where we believe in inspiring and equipping in generation.
today. Come on, let's give God a great hand of praise. Come on, let's give Him a great hand of praise. Hallelujah. All over the house of God today. Amen. We're so glad you joined us for worship today. Come on, can you just give God a mighty shout of praise? Come on. Those of you who are watching, those of you who are listening, come on, give the Lord praise. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, bless the Lord, everybody. Come on, bless the Lord, everybody. Right there in your home, right there. Wherever you are. Come on, praise you. Come on, praise you. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's glorify him. He's just another day. Another year, another moment that we have to praise our God. Come on, everybody. Yeah. just a moment to stop to render a word of prayer this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want to stop to just render a word of prayer. And we want these saints and friends to know that we are praying for them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Belinda Dixon, First Lady Harper, Jeremiah Harper, Sister Rayla Stinnett, and Mother Lucy Spearman. Today, just a special, special shout out. Amen. Want them to know. Can you mute these? Amen. Want them to know that we're praying for them this morning. Amen. amen. And so, whatever the reason is, amen, we don't have to tell all of their business this morning. Amen. Whatever the reason is this morning, but we want to pray for them. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's look to heaven today. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. as we stand here in your presence, yes. as we bless your name, as we glorify you for who you are in our life, yes. we thank you today that we can come before the throne of grace today. Yes. 
on behalf of our brother and on behalf of our sister this morning who are in need of a touch. God, we ask you this morning to just touch them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying today that you look upon the Spearman family today. Look upon our church mother today, oh God. Give her strength in her body today, oh God. Continue to cover her today, we pray. In the name of Jesus, you kept her this long, God, and we thank you for keeping her today, oh God. Hallelujah. Look upon our first lady this morning. Look upon little Jeremiah this morning, oh God. Touch their bodies right now, we pray, oh God. Look upon Sister Dixon and her household, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray a special blessing upon Sister Rayla this morning. God, that you touch her body right now. We rebuke the devour for her sake. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And we command every one of those things in her body to dissolve right now. In the name of Jesus, we command that oxygen level to come up. In the name, come up, 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 come up. In the name of Jesus, even as she watches this morning, my God, relieve her of that oxygen tank, God. In the name of Jesus, touch her body right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare, my God, that it is done by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, God, look on the Meredith this morning. Look on Sister Meredith, oh God. Touch her body right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, look on all those names we don't know to call this morning. But God, somebody in the hospital room today. Somebody's in their home today, oh God. Quarantine, not knowing what to do. Somebody don't have contact with their family, oh God. But today we have the strength to stand, my God, before your presence and ask you to help them, my God. Help them, my hey, hey, help them, my God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, somebody's lost in this season. Somebody's lost in this time, but oh God, we know you're able. Hallelujah, touch them right now. We know you're able. We know you're able. And we declare this morning that it is done. We declare this morning that it is, we have the victory. We declare this morning that our, our family members shall be healed. We declare this morning our family members shall be healed. We declare that our church body shall be healed. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. And we say yes. We say yes to your will today. We say yes to your will today. We say yes to your will today. We say yes! We surrender! We lift up holy hands and say yes, Lord! Woo! The Kanama! 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 The Oh, 
just a minute. I'm gonna run on. I promise I won't be long because see, I try to keep a time limit on the on the live. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Oh Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm happy in my soul. I'm going back to my soul. God. Hallelujah. And I'm looking for God to do it again. I'm looking for God to raise up the people. Hallelujah. But we are people of faith. We are people that believe God. Hallelujah. You may be seated for just a moment. I want to, if you give me about 10 to 12 minutes, I said give me about 10 to 12 minutes. And I will be out your way. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Well, bless his name. Yeah. Woo. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God to us. Those of you who have your cellular devices, I want you to take this time to share the service of the Lord this morning. Those of you who are watching us, amen, take this time to share this service, amen. Praise God. I want to just read to you a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, Psalms 23, Psalms 23. And uh, verse number four, praise God. Psalms 23, verse number four says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Yeah. Praise God. I want to just, if you give me these next just few short little minutes, I want to talk to you about confidence in crisis. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I want to talk to you about confidence in crisis. Amen. Uh, a few months ago, I had talked about when we went out of the service of the Lord, I talked about preventative measures for heart failure. The word of God says that Jesus said to us that uh, in the book of Matthew, that when you see all of the things that we have been seeing here lately, amen, the wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places, amen, and, and even uh, some of these mudslides and wildfires and of course the coronavirus amen the bible says that men's hearts will begin to fail with fear and so we i put out there a few months ago that there are some preventative measures that we need to take to prevent our hearts from failing and one of them today is amen we must have confidence in crisis this is a very familiar text to us today in Psalms 23, and I just want to pull out this one little section that says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We must understand that confidence that all of us at some point will face a crisis. We are not exempt from crisis. We are not exempt from trouble. Amen. We are not exempt from heartache coming into our lives. We are not exempt from disappointment. We are not exempt, amen, from fear. We are not exempt from doubt. We are not exempt from worry. Because the Bible says all of these things will and shall come upon you. But it is our response to the crisis that, amen, is stimulated from being a believer in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. The psalmist begins here. A lot of times people say that, amen, this psalm was, was written by a little shepherd boy. Amen. But it is said that when David wrote Psalms 23, he was a grown man. He was the king at that time. Amen. He wasn't going through little baby challenges, but he was pressed with some real stuff in his life. Praise God. Amen. But he made a declaration, amen, that commanded an immediate result. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. He's the one that looks over me. He's the one that keeps me. He's the one that protects me. He's the one that provides for me. He's the one who's looking out for me. He's always looking out for me. Always busy opening doors that I cannot see. He's my shepherd. He's my protector. And that declaration, amen, calls for an immediate response. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. In, in other words, you understand that if you are under his care, there is nothing that you have to want for. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you're under his care, if you just be patient. Just a little while. Hallelujah. You might have to go through the rough times of life. You might have to go through some times where ridicule is upon you. You might have to go through some times where people shun you away. Where people push you over in the corner. But you can just be patient. Hallelujah. The Lord. Because he is your shepherd. By reason of your declaration that he is your Lord. He is your God. He is your Savior. You shall not want for anything. It's a declaration that commanded an immediate response. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yes. Yes. Preventative measures that prevent from heart failure. Said the shepherd sustains. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Hallelujah. He restored my soul. He leaded me uh, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Let me tell you something. When he is your shepherd, your response to him is in return that I'll live for him. Your response to him is I want to please him. Hallelujah. There's nothing that I, I want to do that causes discomfort to God. And if you're perhaps today in a season where you're saying, I'm not sure if my life is pleasing to God. God is uh, urging us with a sense of urgency to get it right. Oh, my God. We don't have time, amen, to beat you up about it. We don't have time, amen, to, to hold down over your head. Because many of us, we know when we've done wrong. We know when we, amen, but, but God uses the man or woman of God to sometimes to illuminate it. Praise God. But it's up to you to make the decision of whether you're going to turn around. Hallelujah. But when you say the Lord is my shepherd, the Bible says that he leadeth me, amen, in the path of righteousness. Let me back up. Say he restores my soul. So if I am perhaps outside of the alignment with God, he has the ability to restore me back into the position that I need to be in. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is the promise that he makes to us because we declare he was our shepherd. Hallelujah. And because we declared he was our shepherd. Hallelujah. The Bible said he lead me in the path of righteousness. Let me tell you something. When you say the Lord is your shepherd, he doesn't lead you in wrong places. He doesn't lead you down to, to make the wrong decision. When you say the Lord is your shepherd, he leads you in the path of righteousness. Which means he presents every opportunity for you to live right. He presents every opportunity for a way of escape. He presents an opportunity for a way of restoration. He presents an opportunity for a way of forgiveness. Doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done. The opportunity is always there when you say the Lord is my shepherd. So you've got to be careful what declaration you are making. If you say the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, this old folks used to sing a song. There's been a great change in me. God, I feel like talking here. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm almost there my, my few minutes. But, 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 the, but the old folks used to sing a song that said, there's been a great change in me. I am so happy. I am so free. Oh, what a great change. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things. 
things and become new. I don't do what I used to do. I don't say what I used to say. I don't go where I used to go. I don't look like I used to look because a great change has come over me. I don't care what nobody say. God is still requiring holiness. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. We got to, he said, he leaded me in the path of righteousness. But I heard Isaiah say, and the highway shall be down, and it shall be called the way of holiness. He's still calling for holiness. The path in which he has presented to us is holiness. Well, he said, be holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. It's a declaration that look, when he lead, when he is your shepherd, you don't mind living holy. Yes. You don't mind presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, because it's my reasonable servant. It's the least I could do because he saved me, because he provided for me, because he made a way. Yes. The least I could do. The least I could do for him. It's my reasonable service. Yes. You're in a hard place, couldn't pay your bill, but God made a way. Yes. In a house you couldn't pay for, but God made a way. Had a car you couldn't pay for, broke down, but God made a way. Yes. You ain't walking nowhere. Yes. You're not hungry. Yes. Everybody look out out there. If I looked in your homes today, if I went through the phone today, and most of y'all that listening and watching, y'all ain't hungry. That's right. You're not hungry. Yes. You're not cold. Yes. But the Lord, because he's your shepherd, yes. my reasonable service, yes. and therefore it stimulates me because of my position with God. It stimulates, amen, my, my reasonable service, and, and I can have confidence in the midst of crisis. Yes. We're, living, we're, we're living in a crisis now. It's crisis. We open those doors. We open the door to our house. We go to work. It's crisis all around us. Hallelujah. Our homes are in crisis. Not just because of the coronavirus. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Because of unrighteousness. Our homes are in crisis. Hallelujah. Hey, God help me today. Our jobs are in crisis. But the world is in crisis today. Hallelujah. And because the world is in crisis, it has seeped over into the church. But the church was already in crisis because we were doing whatever we wanted to do, saying whatever we wanted to say, living however we wanted to live. And the church was in crisis. Uh, Brown said it to us a few weeks ago. Amen. The church is in. Amen. We would we, we get to the place where we come into church and say, what are we doing? What in the world is going on? Hallelujah. But let me tell you something for us, the people of God. I don't have time to hear, I don't have time to really dialogue about the, the crisis that the church is in. But God has given us preventative measures. Amen. He's given us like he told Jezebel. He said, I gave you a space and time to repent. He shut the doors. My God, for seven months. Hallelujah. The work on us. But God, number seven is a number of completion. He worked on our hearts. Worked on our attitude. Because the church was in crisis. Homes are in crisis. Children in crisis. Hallelujah. Mother and father in crisis. Homes are split because of crisis. Ah, oh my God. But because the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. The Bible said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, an unbeliever walks in the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, God, help me. Words do have power. But if you separate the words, there is a difference. Because the unbeliever, the Bible said, though I, the unbeliever will say, though I am in the valley, which means I have set up residence there. I have set up a tent there. I have established my heart there. Because I don't know how to get out of there. But when the Lord is your shepherd, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But I'm not going to stay here. This is not my final place. But I am going through. Thank you.
just to sing the songs that I'm going through. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil do, but I'm going through. It was another declaration that declared an immediate response. I will fear no evil. It was confidence in the midst of crisis. Hallelujah. Why? Amen. Did he have confidence? Because he said, he was with me. Ah, for you are with me. Though I walk through the valley, I am not, uh, I'm not shaken or quickened. I am not alarmed or I'm not panicked. Hallelujah. By the trouble that is in the valley. But I walk still and calmly through the valley. My God, because God is with me. Why did he have confidence? I got the hurry on here. He said, I'll feel no evil for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yes. Hallelujah. In other words, he helped them understand when you are in crisis and you declare that the Lord is your shepherd. He have a way to wrap in his arms around you. I hear that old song says, oh Lord, I'm in your care. Put your loving arms around me where no evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. That comfort has a way of stealing your mind in the midst of crisis. Yeah. You don't have to be running right here talking about saying, I don't know what to do. I don't care who forsook you. I don't care who left you. But I heard the psalmist say, when my mother and father forsook me, the Lord, he took me up. When I can't find a resolve in mama, when I can't find a resolve in my daddy, the Lord, he shall take me up. I gotta hurry on. Woo. I feel like preaching, but I gotta come over here. Oh God. But listen to what this is what the last thing I got to say. Why you can have confidence in crisis is because there's a blessing for having the presence of God in the midst of danger. Because then he said, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup running over. He said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some of you is thinking it's dwelling in this physical building. But oh God, I hear the songwriter say, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Be holy. There go that word again. That holy. My God, God, holy. Let me just stop right there. When you are holy, you are unified with the word of God and the presence of God. The presence of God and the word of God is unified in your body. And that is what makes you holy. You are in alignment with heaven. You are in alignment with what the word of God says for your life. And that is what holiness is. Holiness means you are in alignment with the word of God. You're in alignment with the word of God. Let me tell you something. And when you have the blessing of the presence of God, my God, hallelujah, you can have confidence in crisis. But I want to ask you the question today. Are you sure that the presence of God lives in your house? Are you sure the presence of God abides in your house? Hallelujah to God. Ah, oh my God. But when you are confident, Sister Bree, hallelujah, I was in a conversation with Bree the other day. I God, and I told her I needed her to put something away. And she said, are you sure you want me to touch that? My God. I said, well, are you, have you been living a holy life? And immediately she said, yes, I have. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. There's no doubt about it in my mind. She said, I've been living a holy life. But when you are, my God, when the Lord is your shepherd, my God, you don't have to worry. And you don't have to wonder because you know you've been living a holy life. You know you've been calling on the name of the Lord. You know you've been fasting and praying. You know you've been walking upright with God. And God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those that walk upright before him. Though I walk in 
the midst of trouble. The Lord is my shepherd, and surely goodness and mercy. They shall follow me all the days of my life. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for God art with me. He's with me. I got confidence in crisis. The Lord, our God, He is with me. I said He's with me. He comforts me. In the midnight hour, Lord, I feel like talking here. I said He comforts me. In the midnight hour, yes, when I'm all alone. Y'all might hear me say it more and more. But when I was laid in that bedroom all by myself, seemed like some nights the walls was closing in on me. Body was getting weaker and weaker by the minute. But one night, I just had to look up at the ceiling and heard the Lord say to me, it's now time for you to rely on the God in which you preach. You preach that God is a healer. Do you believe it? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Even on my sick bed, I had to get rebuked by the Lord. He said, do you believe that I'm able to heal? Do you believe? My God, I just had to say that. I couldn't lift my hands. I couldn't lift my toe help. Couldn't hardly move over in the bed. But I just had to lift up in my soul. Didn't even want to open my mouth, but my spirit said, Lord, I believe. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. My God. And at that time, I hadn't eaten for over a week. I even, my God ended up in the emergency room. My God, nothing coming up. Couldn't have walked to the bathroom. Y'all ain't gonna help me. We had to lean on the wall to get assistance to go to the bathroom. Y'all ain't talking to me. My God, help me, Jesus. But that night, I told the Lord I believe. I brought my wife. God bless her, her poor little heart. She tried to cook for me, but I couldn't eat. The smell of food made me want to just throw up. Y'all ain't talking to me here. And she tried everything she knew to try. She stand at the door day after day and say, baby, are you all right? And sometimes I couldn't even open my mouth. But there was this one particular night that I sat on the side of the bed. I actually I wasn't even sitting, I was leaning, humped over on the bed, and I began to cry real tears, and I cried and I cried, y'all ain't gonna help me talk, somebody said real men cry, but when you hurt, you cry, yes, Lord have mercy, look like that thing wouldn't come up, but I cried and I cried, my God, I woke up that morning, and I told her, take me to the emergency room. Hallelujah. I tried to make it, but I just couldn't make it. But when I got back home, y'all ain't gonna help me. I prayed and I prayed. I prayed and I cried. I cried and I prayed. But I kept on saying, Lord, you are the God that healeth me. And one morning, everybody in my house in the morning, I made it to the microwave, I made me some grits in the microwave, and I said, Lord, if you just bless me to eat these shit, I'll be alright, and I ate the whole bowl, y'all ain't gonna help me, but as I ate them grits, I felt strength come in my nose, I felt strength come in my body, and after I, I set up in the prayer, Thank you, baby. 
confidence level will rise. Sometimes because we've grown up with low self-esteem or low self-worth that there are times when we're not certain because of the severity of the crisis. We're not certain if God's going to bring us through. Come on now. You say, God, I believe, but you're like that man. You said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I want out of this crisis but I just need you to help my unbelief today my God hallelujah don't you want out today hallelujah some things you're not going to get out right away but you got the ability to go through it you got the confidence to go through it and there's something about when you have that confidence that says, oh, this ain't my end. Come on. <laughs> this is not the end of this for me. That God got more for me. God gonna see me through. It seems like it's a motivator yeah, yeah. to help you to keep pressing. And so I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage everyone under the sound of my voice today. Keep pressing. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Again, there goes that path, that path of righteousness. I press toward the mark. And I'm going to declare to you today, keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Because there is a bright side on the other side. Hallelujah. There's a brighter day on up the road far in the distance. The songwriter said, I can see the light. The light shining bright. It penetrates through life's heavy fog. But the songwriter said, oh, it's Jesus. He cracked us all. Because there's a brighter day ahead. Just keep pressing. Don't get discouraged because of what you see. And what you feel. And the severity of the crisis. But press on. Press on. And you're going to see the works of God. You're going to see the wonders of God. I'm living witness. Some of you today, 
you're in a better position than you were at the beginning of 2020, despite all the crisis. You're more mentally stable. Your heart is more convinced toward God. Some of you got more money than you had when you came in 2020. I can tell you, this ministry got more than we had when we came in 2020. You say, God bless the ministry in the middle of a pandemic. God gave us a complete overhaul. Y'all ain't talking. From the front to the back, from the top to the bottom. In the middle of a pandemic. When they said, shut the doors. Somebody said, when you shut the doors, ain't no money coming in. <laughs> But we can say that wasn't the truth. More money came when the doors were shut. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't have to want for anything. And God's house shouldn't have to want for anything. I don't, I don't have time. To, I'm not going to preach all over again. But I heard the, the word of God say, How can you sit with my house lying waste? You build up your own house. Hey, hey, hey. But I'm telling you, when you build up God's house, you'll take care of your house. When you take care of God's business, he'll take care of you. It's not just a physical building, but when you when you go see about somebody who's hungry, who's naked, who's in prison, God said, you've come to see about the least of them. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, the word of God is coming so strong. These days are telling us that there are many, many who have cried, Lord, Lord. But he said, I don't know you. Depart from me. I want to know today, those of you who are watching, listening, those of you who are in this building, does the Lord know you today? You say he's your shepherd. But when I was a little boy, we used to sing a song. You said that I was your shepherd. But why aren't you following me? Because I won't lead you down the path of destruction. Only the enemy, only the devil does that. And he's cunning and he's, con he's conniving, he's manipulative to make you go down a path that you think is right. And I want to tell you today, oh, what a change can come over your life today right where you are if you would just surrender yourself some of all of us need to even if we say we love God all of us need to need to re recommit to him every day because maybe something I said last night wasn't pleasing to him but he let me go to sleep and wake up to make it right today maybe you said something did something this morning but God have mercy on you. Why don't you say, Lord, I surrender. And my soul say yes. Come on. Type it in the comment line today. My soul say yes. My soul say yes. That's the greatest form of repentance that you can say. And I'm sorry. And my soul say yes. When your soul say yes, it brings you back into realignment and restoration with God. All he wants is a yes out of us. You say, I've heard that before, but it still applies today. We, we say all the time, we say all the time, I've heard it before. Jesus is on his way back, but he's closer than he's ever been. Some of us never thought in our lifetime that we would see the day when the church doors were closed. But we've seen it in our lifetime. The Bible being fulfilled prophecy being fulfilled. What more do we need to get our lives together? Don't you want to go back with him? 
I'm not getting excited about the material things, but I'm getting excited that by grave or by rapture, I'm going with him. My soul is in preparation to go back with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you today say, I want to go back with him? I want to go back with him. I want to live with I want to live with him forever. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't want to be left behind. But I want to go back with him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> forgive me, Lord. Where I'm arrogant before you, forgive me. And I say yes to you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on, say yes, Lord. We're past our time on the air, but it's all right. Just say yes, Lord. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Come on. Just take a moment to meditate before him. Yes, Lord.
clap your hands and say thank God for the day. Come on, say thank God for the day. Come on, thank God for the day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for the change. Amen. We're making ready to give in the house of God. Those of you who are watching us today, amen. You may uh, prepare to give today. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, amen. You can give, amen, by way of our cash app, amen, dollar sign Johnson Holy Temple. Again, that's dollar sign Johnson Holy Temple. Or you can download the Givelify app and give by way of Givelify, amen. Uh, you can give that way as well. Or you can visit our website at www.jhtchurch.com. And as you give, amen, www.jhtchurch, there is a giving link. And when you click the giving link, amen, it will lead you to a form to where you can give as well. You can give by way of PayPal to Johnson Holy Temple. Or you can simply give by way of the mail. 1906 Joe Louis Boulevard, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71107. Again, that's 1906 Joe Louis Boulevard, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71107. Amen. And whatever the Lord has blessed you to give, amen, we'll be so glad and so thankful for what you have given unto us today. Amen. Thank God for you joining us today. And we pray the blessing of God be upon your life. Amen. On today. And until next time, we pray the blessing of God be on your life. Amen. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for being with us today. And as we always say, have a blessed and a prosperous week. Amen. Praise God.